Hi, I hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday or whatever day it is you're looking at this. I hope things go decent for you. Um, as we march into um, the week, I just wanted to remind you, would you please be sure to send me or Mike or Vanessa some pictures of you dressed in red? because we know we have our big Pentecost celebration coming up this Sunday. And so if you do that, that would, and I'd be willing to come out and take your picture if you want, um, so that we can do some kind of showing off of, a, of what we look like in red, whether it is our color or not. And Don, Bob and Donna Pownell are willing to, to change our pyramids. And so we're going to be reddened up the last time um, I remember doing, um, when I was at Warner, we it was a confirmation service, and a lot of times what pastors like to do is pick on the red Sundays to do confirmation. So that's one of the reasons why the last Sunday in October, uh, Reformation Sunday and um, Pentecost is often used, but Pentecost is varying every year like Easter is. Pentecost is 50 days after Easter. And I try to encourage confirmation students to think of Pentecost when we think of a pentagon or whatever, a five-shaped figure. That can help us maybe a little bit to remember that kind of thing. So wear red and take your picture. We may feel like we're kind of in exile. The people of Israel in 586 B.C., were taken into ex Babylonian exile, and it seemed like a long time. It was decades long, and the prophet Isaiah was trying to give them encouragement, and, and that's, I guess, where I'm at today with all of us, you know, as we're, we're kind of stuck in the middle. We're just um, not being able to go very far. As the counts are continuing to rise in Beetle County, and especially in the Huron area, we, we know that it's going to take a while for this to calm down and so we can meet again. And so I just wanted to share with you um, the, from the 58th chapter of Isaiah, who, the prophet is trying to give the people encouragement as they look ahead. He writes, If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose, water, whose waters never fail. And, of course, we've been having some rain again, and it, it's been helpful for the gardeners, I know, but I know some of you are just overwhelmed with water and hoping that it just kind of allows everything to dry up. But we have a God who is walking with us. On Sunday, again, I talked about our how do we do our waiting, just like the disciples did when they were supposed to wait for power on high. From on high, they awaited in prayer. And so may we be consistent and um, very just forceful in our prayers of waiting on God and allowing God to work with us, to work through us, and to give us the strength and courage we need to face the time ahead. Let us pray. Faithful God, you care for us every day. And with you as our companion, we are never alone. Grant to each one of us, your children, fulfillment in our, lively, our life tasks now as we are in this pandemic. Give us confidence in your steadfast love. Support us in the community of your people as we have to reach out. Help us to reach out by phone or any way, email, texting, any way that we can to help one another to be guided through these difficult days. You are our peace and strength, O oh God. We pray for us as a nation, as a state, as a community. 
We pray for the world as we face new uncertainties around the coronavirus. Protect all who are vulnerable among us, especially all who are currently sick or in isolation. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to healthcare workers, especially as their work caring for others puts them at a great risk. Guide us as we consider how best to prepare and respond in our families as a congregation and places of work and our community. Give us the courage to face the days, not with fear, but with compassion, concern, acts of service, trusting that you abide with us always. Lord our God, as we await Pentecost, may your spirit be enlivened among us and within us. Help lead and guide us to realize how you abide with us and how you walk with us and give us all that is needed through these days and times. Lord God, anything else that you see that we need, please grant us through your Son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace, love, hope, and courage as you face your new challenges of the day. Amen. Thank you for your time.